Well, as you can see, we are definitely into the depths of fall. And uh, yeah, it's living up to its name. I'm watching leaves all over the place, uh, falling off the trees and hitting the ground. This morning I was out, it was so cold, there was frost on the grass, it made it kind of crinkle under my feet. I got a presentation coming up with some kids, uh, fifth graders at a school, a local school here. But I wanted to just uh, fill you in a little bit about the, this video. It has to do with this dark fishing spider that uh, well, was, was living with me for about three years, so that was pretty cool. And uh, the beautiful part about it was I got quite attached to the spider, and I think in some weird way, the spider really knew who I was, and I'll share more about that and how that developed. So let's just take a look at uh, how I found that spider. You saw that in the last video. It was found in an outhouse. That's right, an outhouse. Uh, pretty stinky business, but actually it wasn't too bad in the outhouse that day when we found that spider. And uh, that's the spider I brought home to film, and she never left my house after that. Whatever reasons I can only guess. I don't think it's the air. <laughs> it doesn't smell good in there. But I got a hunch the foul air draws flies and flies are good eating for spiders. So let's go inside. I'll show you what we saw in here and I'm gonna try to catch her bring her home for some up close and personal filming. So let's go inside. We are in a uh, hot house. <laughs> And this is what makes it an outhouse, is what it's it, what, Yeah, it's kind of stinky. But in the Super. stinky, in the stinky outhouse, look at what we found up here on the wall on our hunt. This is a dark fishing spider. This is a good sized spider. This is the first fishing spider I have seen all season. I was hoping to see one, and now finally I get to see one. Nice. Oh, wow. Oh, it's it's pretty. Good sized spider. Oh, look at that. Good girl. She's gonna end up on my hand in a second. She'll probably end up coming on my hand. And if she does that, she won't like the warmth of my hand. There we go. Got the girl in there. Well, you may have figured out by now, I'm trying to capture some of the colors in West Michigan to uh, show you what's going on in my neck of the woods. Hopefully you're having a really nice colorful fall as well. The next section of this video on this uh, spider is how I got acquainted with her in my home and um, fed her, watered her, took care of her. So let me show you some of those scenes and then we'll uh, go on to some other things that occurred with that spider's life in my life at my home. Now this old girl here, she's molted twice in one month. She's been chowing down crickets and she is just ginormous. This is, again, Michigan's largest spider. And she has three and a quarter inch leg spread from front leg to hind leg when they're spread out. So this is one big girl. And she just molded, so she's sporting her new colors and pattern. Looks pretty nice. And the molting process has been completed. The new emerging, a larger spider is in the center of the screen and the shed exoskeleton is behind the spider. 
right there. The spider will now dry out, relax, rest. It's a lot of work to go through a molting. And this is the spider's most dangerous time. I removed the crickets that she had in the container here because they could kill the spider. No eating yet for a few days. Her fangs have to harden. These spiders are very fast. In good eyesight. And I'm just excited to uh, have this girl here winterizing with me because uh, I didn't see one of these spiders all summer. So I am very pleased to have this eight-legged creature winterizing with me in the house. However, she's going to eat me out of, well, she's going to keep me busy delivering crickets to her. Let me put it that way, <laughs> which is fine. This black disc there that's in the corner of the habitat provides her with a little hiding space because these particular spiders enjoy hiding in dark spots. So I want to give her a corner there, and there she is underneath there, enjoying the darkness of her habitat. And of course now I've opened it up to the light. Oh, and she's been eating quite well. She is a very good size spider. All right, let's see if we can put this down without her running off. I'm trying to find some place to hide. Well, I guess she's going to come right over and just visit me. Aha, she's touched the warm hand. She's trying to decide if she likes it. So far, so good. But she's not quite so sure about it because she's kept three other legs back on the screen and the lower part of her abdomen not as on the hand here so we'll see if she decides it might be good or not for herself oh she's making the move so she must like the feeling of the warm hand I would say this is the largest spider I've ever had in captivity. True spider, that is. I do have a curly-haired tarantula, Honduras, um, variety, um, which is huge, about the size of my hand or palm. Uh, but this girl is right up there with being a true spider, that is. True spiders being how they maneuver their jaws at least by definition. She seems content to be on my shirt anyway. A lot of good grabbing threads there with the little hook claws on the tips of her toes on her feet. And it's not quite as warm as my direct skin contact. So she seems to be content to sit there for a little bit. To give you an idea of her size, if I put her on the top of a 60 watt light bulb, her legs would spread over the whole top of the bulb and drape over the side. She's made her way back to my warm hand, and she pauses, check out the temperature change. She decides it's okay to proceed. Oh, this is an amazing spider, at least for me, and uh, wow, 
when a spider takes up the good size of your palm or your hand, that's a good size spider. In these next few shots, I'm going to show you while this spider and I kind of uh, mm, had this interesting relationship, <laughs> if you will. And it was the beginning of my attachment to this girl. She was uh, something special. I've never had a spider quite that large, this type of spider, a wild spider, to uh, yeah, get up close and personal with and enjoy uh, the spider's activities and taking good care of her in my home. So the next scenes you're going to see are the technique that I used to employ that to let the spider know it was me approaching her. I think it worked fairly successfully. I've tried it on a few other spiders that seems to have some benefits. Uh, this particular spider, I think, uh, really connected with me on this particular... <laughs> Just checking on the girl this morning, seeing how she's doing. She's doing quite well. I believe uh, over the last several weeks with this spider, she potentially has become accustomed to me. Uh, I know she can see well and maybe I don't know exactly how this all works in a spider's mind but anyway I think she maybe trusts me. Um, she doesn't run from me. She's not skittish uh, like she was initially and I do a little strange thing, at least you might find it strange. I blow a little warm air on her when I approach her and I think she's uh, become used to that and sees it as maybe some kind of a signal that this big thing approaching me is okay. So she's uh, grooming herself a little bit with her pedipalps this morning. I'll give you one last look and then uh, we'll check back a little later. There was a time, you know, when I had this girl. I thought I lost her for good. She got out of her habitat, disappeared. I think it was three weeks, maybe longer, before I found her one day, accidentally. Thought she was long gone and dead. And hey, she turned up in the strangest place, my bathroom. Let's go take a look. I'm so excited today because my, um, missing spider, my prodigal spider, has returned home. She was right down here. And she was sitting there after four weeks of being missing in action. I was just so glad to see her sitting there looking, well, I don't know if she was looking at me, but I'll show you, I got her back in her container. Figured she was toast, you know? dead meat. <laughs> but anyway, I'm so glad that uh, that I saw her this morning. I just went out and got her some crickets to eat. And maybe we can, uh, if she's really hungry, which I'm sure she probably is, see if we can catch her in action having some breakfast. I'm sure she enjoyed her freedom. But when you can't find something to drink or something to eat, I'm sure she found some things. But after four weeks... It looks like she's got some litter on her pedipalps there. We may have to help her clean those off. Probably dust and who knows what else she's picked up in the house. But so good to have her back. She has three crickets in there. And um, see how long it takes her to... Hopefully she got enough energy to get herself a cricket. <laughs> 